this technique um, and feed into how we make a genomic library. So here's our eukaryotic chromosome, and here's a vector that belongs to a bacteria. Now, what do you use to cut the eukaryotic chromosome? Restriction, Restriction enzyme, endonuclease, right? We cut it up into many, many different pieces. Now, what do we use to cut the vector? Same one. The same restriction enzyme. So they have the same sticky ends and they can insert at the same, you know, place. Now, um, and then all our fragments that we cut with the restriction enzyme, we expose it to the plasmid and we're going to get a recombinant vector. Some of them will have a gene of interest, some of them won't have a gene of interest. Understand that? How do we know our plasmid has taken our DNA of interest? We choose an endonuclease that's going to cleave this ampicillin resistance. Okay? Um, just put it on the floor or something. Or put it on the table behind him so it's okay. You put it on the floor. We choose an endonuclease that will cleave this ampicillin resistance. If our target DNA, or our DNA of interest, successfully inserts in this region, will they have ampicillin resistance? No. The bacteria this plasmid gets inserted in will not have ampicillin resistance if it successfully takes our DNA. Now, um, I already went over this. Now, here's the testing you have to go through. So, do the plasmids still express tetracycline resistance? Yes, the tetracycline gene is not interrupted. So, when we inject the plasma into a bacteria, they're still going to have resistance to tetracycline, but the ones who successfully take up the plasmid will not have ampicillin resistance. Okay, so, what we're going to do is we expose a bunch of colonies of bacteria to our plasmid, and then we... This will be the control, which has tetracycline only. And this will have tetracycline and ampicillin. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to assist. Here's our colony. Pretend this petri dish has a bunch of colonies in it. This one right here. Pretend that we take a colony, a swab of a colony, and systematically dip it in. One, one. Okay? We're going to have to make the petri dishes gridded. <coughs> of course, in real life, the grids will be more extensive. Okay, so we're going to take a swab of bacteria and insert it in this grid, and we're going to insert the same colony into this grid. Now, these two colonies are identical. Okay? Now, to avoid contamination, we have to systematically pick another and put it in the next grid. So we're going to probably throw this out or sterilize it, most likely throw it out, take like a new rod or one, pick another colony, Insert, insert. Take another colony, insert, insert. Okay, <coughs> we're going to follow through. Now, they all express tetracycline resistance. The bacteria that we injected the plasmid in, they express tetracycline resistance. So they should all, a lot of them should survive. Now, on this plate, it has tetracycline and ampicillin. So, the bacteria that successfully take in the plasmid that have a recombinant vector will die. Okay, so let's assume that in this grid right here, this grid right here, and this grid right here, the colonies die. That means in these grids have a vector plasmid. Like a recombinant vector. 
So we just go to the corresponding in the petrocycline. Because you know how we dotted the same grid? Go to the here. And all we have to do is now we know these have a recombinant vector. So we just take them and grow them on a wide scale. And we can do some testing to see if they actually took our DNA. But you guys get the main gist of everything. Um, so this is how you make our genomic library. Now, how do we make a cDNA library? No, not this picture. cDNA library. So what's the difference between a genomic library and a cDNA library? Can anyone tell me? So, so our genomic library has, like, you know, uh, regulatory sequences. It has exons and introns. Okay, we can't control what gets put into the plasmid as much. But our cDNA library, it's called cDNA because it's complementary DNA. It only consists of exons and exons only. How do we make this? We look at the mRNA that we, or the complementary mRNA that we want to make. It's single-stranded. Okay. Now, what does DNA synthesis need? It needs a primer, right? So we make a bunch of T's complementing the poly A tail. That is our primer. And then we expose it to reverse transcriptase. <laughs> And I'll make one DNA strand that complements the mRNA strand. Now we have to degrade the RNA strand with RNA's H. So we have one DNA strand and a degrading mRNA strand. Then we do DNA synthesis to make two stranded complementary DNA that consists of only exons. Make sense? And here's the difference between genomic libraries and cDNA libraries. Genomic libraries have introns, regulatory sequences, and exons. Our cDNA library, because we started with mRNA, and mRNA gets spliced in eukaryotes, and we're left with only exons, only have exons. Okay? Where is it? Okay. So this technique, or this vector, is a technique we use to make recombinant protein be expressed in eukaryotic cells. Okay, so this plasmid here, what you pretty much have to know is you have to understand each region and what each region is used for. So initially, we use the endonuclease to cleave our DNA of interest and to insert our gene of interest right here. We can use any one of these endonucleases and insert our gene of interest right here. <coughs> So, how do we know that our gene of interest has probably been put into the vector and our bacteria have taken up the vector? If the bacteria have properly taken up the vector, they're going to express ampicillin resistance. Make sense? Now, we want to make this vector on a wide scale, so we just have to get the bacteria to replicate, and every time they replicate, they're making the vector for us. This right here is used for replication. Now, we introduce the DNA in our eukaryotic cell. How do we know that our eukaryotic cell has successfully taken the DNA? We expose them to neomycin. Neomycin is a toxin that kills eukaryotic cells. If our eukaryotic cells have successfully taken the DNA, they're going to transcribe this gene with its poly A tail and express neomycin resistance, and they will survive. The cells that don't take the DNA will die because they don't have neomycin resistance. Now, now we can express our DNA in eukaryotic cells, like our, our gene and our protein. This here is a promoter region that helps express the gene we inserted here, right? The DNA we inserted here. And this is a poly A tail for the sequence so we can make, successfully make protein in the eukaryotic cell. Now that we made our protein, we use mic epitope to purify and isolate our protein. That's all this vector is about. It's used to make protein in our eukaryotic cell that they normally don't express. That's it. I hope I clarified that for you guys. You can stop recording now.